that's my my main focus. My thing ain't to focus on no one else's problems. My, my thing is that I got I got this this tough rugged fighter in front of me. That's what I need to focus on. You know, there's been a lot of talk about wanting to stop him. You know, wanting to knock him out. Yes. Uh, how how big a priority is that rather than just get the win? I'm going for the knockout. Is there some danger involved in that? It's always danger. Even when a guy is not a big puncher, it's always danger. And then um, I heard somebody say that he had the highest knockout ratio of any guy that I faced. It's not true. I didn't face uh, Philip Endu. Philip Endu was 31 and 1 with 30 knockouts. So I think that's like 95 or 90 somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, so um, he's a good fighter. You know, he's a, he's a tough, rugged guy. Why is the knockout important, though, in this career? Make a statement. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to make a statement. Yeah. Is it because of the, the, the tactics in the first fight that kind of riled you up, or is it just to make a statement to the world? Um, not to the world, for myself first. Self-preservation, I want to do it for me. Bottom line, we don't need any more questions about it. He's very, very clear and direct that he doesn't condone this kind of behavior. That's none of his business what goes on with other people. In no people. one else's household. In, in no one else's household. I mean, I just feel like this. If, if this is about boxing, this is about me and my Donna, y'all shouldn't come to me ask me about no football. I'm not even an NFL like player. Right. And I'm a boxer. That's what I do for a living. Whatever happened, that's their situation. He's been very clear and adamant, but he doesn't on this kind of behavior. So we don't need to ask any more of those questions. He's been very, very clear. And we're not going to ask any more of these questions. Not going to answer any more of these questions. I mean, what we call that rhetorical question, they, they sit right here and go around and all, ask the same questions over and over again, all of them, but in a different manner, in a different way. Yes. Yeah, okay. I guess, I guess all I'm asking is, the, does the media reaction affect your preparation for the fight? You got to realize, I don't read nothing. Yeah. And, you know, I don't read nothing. Remember, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> only, only time I read is when, I, when, they, when they put them 70 teleprompters in front of me for the fight. Because can't nobody do it like me. Yeah, but if it's, if, honestly, if it's something neg negative, I try to, you know, push it to the side. You know, if I'm going to read and focus on something, it has to be something positive. Don't you use it as kind of like a me against the world type mind mentality that you have in the first place? What? Any negativity. I don't worry about it. You know, um, good press, bad press, good stories, bad stories. Just write about me. I'm something to talk about. Write about me. Let's talk. No, I just, you, sometimes you want to take a vacation. You know, I want to go to probably go to my house in, my house in Miami or, you know, take a trip. You know, with my daughter, which my daughter's my best friend. Um, take a trip with my daughter, or take a trip with my team. Just rest. You know, I, I like to just rest. You, you sleep good before a fight or a rest? You know, oh, yeah, I sleep. I sleep. I, sleep. I got a Tempur Pedic, of course. <laughs> I got a custom Tempur Pedic bed, so of course. I sleep good every night. Good. But have you ever thought about what you're going to do when you do retire, being that you only have a year left in your own opinion? Well, you're right, baby. I do got a year left. Anything else? Um, I can't really say, but I know I'm going to be helping Leonard with this Mayweather Promotions company and helping these fighters grow. That's what it's about. When you watch that, that first fight, what do you think is going to be the most significant adjustment that we'll see? Is that on from your part? I don't have to make no adjustments. He do. I won. Nothing, nothing. He had to make adjustments. I don't. I won. Did you, you especially won from like the seventh round on? I mean, did you feel like you kind you of better go, them? you better go back, you better go back and look at that fight from the fifth round on. Seventh, fifth. Floyd, you want to be I threw hands. I boxed. That's what I do for a living. I box. <laughs> I threw hands in the fifth. Floyd, you're one of the greatest defensive fighters of all time, but you also have never been down before in a professional fight. Do you think people underrate that about you? You have you have an underrated chin and an underrated warrior. I try not to take no shots, you know. Shane hit me with a good, a couple guys hit me with a couple good shots, but uh, true champion, I bit down and came back. Nobody wants to be on that list. 
No, I don't want to be. I don't want to be known as a guy that, that can take a good shot. I, I'd rather be known as a guy that can got good defense and can dish it out. Floyd, tell me, can you tell me about this training camp? Describe it in a few words, and what's the support mean? Um, tra this training camp, very intense. Um, very positive, very comfortable. Do you feel there's a lot of characters in the gym who people are going to start knowing about in the coming years? Um, hopefully. Only thing I can do is keep my fingers crossed and hope for the best. Floyd, how come only you and B-Hop, out of millions of fighters, are ready to fight 24-7, 365? I'm not ready to fight 24-7, <laughs> 365. You um, always in shape? No, I'm not always in shape. I just... I mean, I got, a, I guess, a high metabolism, you know? You know, I walk around in my fight weight. Nobody does that? Yeah, I walk around in my fight weight, so I don't have to really lose, I don't have to lose no weight. Could you probably still make 140 pounds if you had to? No, my body, I've been, I've been here for over, almost 10 years. So I don't, I don't think so. How do you, what are your expectations about Maidana? You already talk, he's a dear fighter, but do you expect something more about Maidana this Saturday night? Run it by me again. Come, ask, again. ask me again. Uh, what are your expectations about Maidana? You already talk he's a dirty fighter, but do you are expecting something more? Of um, I can't really say. You know, um, I don't really know what's their game plan. You know, I don't really know what's my game plan. You know, but my game plan is to be smart and be first and watch every move that he makes. Floyd, would you be disappointed if Maidana won more than three rounds this time around, the rematch? Um, absolutely not. You know, um, the main thing is it's about me winning. You know, it could be seven to five. I will win. Floyd, how much faith do you have in the judges? You know, you've had some bad decisions here and there. You know, is there any concern with that at all? I don't know what's going on with these. I don't really know what's going on. You gotta talk to Leonard about that. I'm going out there fighting. I know I'm, I know I'm winning. The Matt Hafler State Commission has appointed the best officials. Um, and Floyd's gonna go out there and do what he does. And Leonard, I'll let you finish with them. I'm gonna go into the house. Yeah, okay. All right, All right see y'all later. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Floyd.